Bryophytes are a group of simple green land dwelling plants of which a few are aquatic, thriving best in damp, shaded and humid localities. They comprise hornwoods, liverwoods and mosses. There are about 16,000 bryophyte species in the world which are found on every continent including Antarctica. Bryophytes occur from the sea level to the alpine areas and from the temperate climates to the tropics. In fact, the only environment where they have never been found are oceans. As bryophytes are simple plants, most of them have no internal means for transporting water or nutrients. They are often said to have leaves, but these are not equivalent to the leaves of vascular plants. They do not have any roots but do have filamentous rhizoids which are delicate, unbranched, unicellular, hair-like organs. But do little more than anchor the plants. Most bryophytes are either liverworts or mosses. Liverworts grow horizontally and are flattened or leafy, whereas mosses have an upright stalk with spirally arranged leaf-like structures. The pililocorpus mosses, that is those mosses which form a corpus-like structure, are characterized by extensive branching and lateral sporophyte placement. Compared to the terminal sporophytes in acrocorpus, that is those mosses which are erect. Pilocorpus mosses constitute the major group of mosses. Though tiny bryophytes modify their microclimate and serve to conserve moisture, check soil erosion on hilly slopes, and also serve as a seed bed for forest cover. They are now increasingly being used for purposes ranging from pollution monitoring mainly due to their simple thylite or one cell thick structure. Lack of cuticle or epidermis resulting in the greater absorption and accumulation of nutrients and pollutants directly from the atmosphere to the new sources of pharmaceutical products used to treat illnesses of the cardiovascular system, tonsillitis, bronchites, tympanids, cystitis, hemophilia, as well as skin diseases and burns. Bryophytic plants do not produce flowers and therefore never produce seeds. Plants that do not flower are called cryptogams and reproduce by spore production. The other cryptogam being fungi, slime molds and ferns. A 
alternation of generations is a life cycle involving two phases of life which regularly alternate with each other. In bryophytes, the first phase is the gametophytic phase. in which the gametes are produced that contain half the number of chromosomes. This is the dominant phase in the life of bryophytes and produces sexually by egg and sperm. Once the egg and sperm fuse to produce zygote starts the second phase. The zygote germinates to produce sporophyte whose cells possess the complete number of chromosomes. This second phase, the sporophytic phase, is the spore producing phase. The sporophyte cannot exist independently. It is composed of a capsule, a stalk, a foot that attaches the sporophyte body to the gametophyte. The sporophyte reproduces asexually by means of spores which are produced by meiosis and are haploid. Each spore germinates to produce a gametophyte, which is independent phase. This way, the life cycle is complete. Of the three phyla of bryophytes, the greatest species diversity is found in mosses. With up to 15,000 species having been recognized, a moss begins its life cycle when haploid spores, which are produced in the sporophyte capsule, land on moist substrate and begin to germinate. From the one salad spore, a highly branched system of filaments called protonema develops. Cell specialization occurs within the protonema to form rhizoidal system called colonimal filaments and upright green filaments called chloronimal filaments. Each protonema, which superficially resembles a filamentous alga, can spread over several centimeters to form a fuzzy green film over its substrate. As the protonema grows, some cells of the colonimal filament specialize to form leafy buds that will ultimately form the adult gametophyte shoots. Numerous shoots typically develop from each gametophyte so that in fact a single spore can give rise to a whole clump of moss plant. Each leafy shoot continues to grow epically, producing leaves in spiral arrangement on an elongating system. As is typical of bryophytes, mosses produce large multicellular sex organs for reproduction. Many bryophytes are unisexual or sexually dioecious. In mosses, male sex organs called entridae are produced in clusters at the tip of shoots or branches on the male plants. And the female sex organs, the archegoniae, are produced in similar fashion on the female plants. Numerous motile sperms are produced by mitosis inside the brightly colored club-shaped entridae, while a single egg develops in the base of each vase-shaped archegonium. As it bears gametes, the green independent individual is called gametophyte. The gametophyte plant along with the structures produced by it constitute the gametophytic generation. As the sperms mature, the entridia swells and bursts open. Drops of rainwater falling into cluster of open entridae splash the sperms to nearby females, beating their two whiplash flagella. The spermas are able to move short distances in water, 
film that covers the plants to open necks of archegonia. Slime mucilage secretions in the archegonial neck help pull the sperm downward to the egg. The fusion of egg with sperm results in fertilization by which zygote is formed. The zygote on germination does not produce gametophyte plant. It undergoes segmentation to form embryo. The embryo by further segmentation and differentiation give rise to the second adult called sporogonium. It remains diploid and is usually differentiated into foot, sita and capsule. As the sporogonium is concerned with production of spores, it is called the sporophyte. Sporophyte growth ends with the formation of a sporogonium or capsule at the tip of seta. Within the capsule, water resistant spores are formed by meiosis. As the mature capsule swells, the calyptra falls away. This allows the capsule to dry and break open at its tip in order to release spores into the drying winds. The zygote, the embryo and the sporogonium together constitute the sporophytic generation. It is less conspicuous, moreover, it is dependent for its nutrition wholly or partially on the gametophyte plant to which it is attached organically throughout its life. It starts with zygote and ends with the formation of spore mother cells in the capsule. The meiospores are the pioneer structures of the next gametophytic generation. On germination, each spore produces a gametophyte and not a sporophyte plant. Life cycle in liverworts and hornworts. Liverworts and hornworts are like most in the fundamental features of their life cycle, but differ greatly in the organization of their mature gametophytes and sporophytes. Liverwort gametophytes can be either leafy shoots or flattened thalli. In the leafy forms, the thalli are arranged on the stem in one ventral and two lateral rows or ranks, rather than in spirals as in mosses. The leaves are one cell layer thick throughout, never have a midvein and are usually divided into two or more pots called lobes. The ventral leaves, which actually lie against the substrate, are usually much smaller than the later leaves and are hidden by the stem. Liverwort sporophyte develops completely enclosed within the gametophyte tissue until their capsule are ready to open. The seta, which is initially very short, consists of small, thin walled hyaline cells. Just prior to capsule opening, the seta cells lengthen, thereby increasing the length of seta up to 20 times its original dimensions. This rapid elongation pushes the darkly pigmented capsule and upper part of the white seta out of the gametophytic tissue. With drying, the capsule opens by splitting into four segments or valves. The spores are dispersed into the winds by twisting motions of numerous intermixed style cells called elators. In contrast to mosses, which disperse their spores over several days, liverworts disperse the entire spores mass of a single capsule in just a few minutes. Hornworts resemble some liverworts in having simple and specialized thalloid gametophytes but they differ in many other characters. Hornwoods get their name from the long horn-shaped sporophytes. As in other bryophytes, the sporophyte is anchored in the gametophyte by foot through which nutrient transfer from the gametophyte to sporophyte occurs. The rest of the sporophyte, however, is actually an elongated sporogonium in which meiosis and spore development takes place. At the base of the sporogony, just above the foot, is a mitotically active meristem, which adds new cells to the spore producing zone throughout the lifespan of the sporophyte. In fact, the 
sporangonium can release spores at its apex at the same time that new spores are produced by meiosis at the base spore release in hormones takes place gradually over a long period of time and the spores are mostly dispersed by water movements rather than by wind origin of alternation of generations two theories namely antithetic and homologous have received considerable attention regarding the origin of alternation of generations in bryophytes the former was proposed by silavaskoy in 1874 and the later was by pringsheim in 1878 now antithetic theory according to the antithetic theory the gametophyte or the sexual plant represents the original generation the sporophyte or the non sexual organism is a new and different phase evolved by progressive elaboration of the diploid zygote of some algal ancestors like colchidae it is interpolated in the life cycle of the gametophytes of primitive land plants between the two crucial points that is fertilization and meiosis in response to the life in trier environment the two factors which caused its origin or prompt germination of zygote accompanied by the delayed meiosis the result is the formation of a small sporophyte of rickshia consisting simply of spore case with further elaboration and increased sterilization of the spore producing tissue a large sporophyte with differentiation into foot seta and capsule is finally evolved homologous theory according to this theory the sporophyte is simply modification of gametophyte and not a new generation evolved in response to life in drier environment the proponents of this theory point that among the green algae the gametophyte plant reproduces by both methods of reproduction it bears spores and also gametes in course of evolutionary processes these two functions became separated into distinct individuals one of these produced spores and the other produced gametes the former came to be known as sporophyte and the later gametophyte these two individuals occur regularly one after other in the life cycle the occurrence of two similar generations in most of the algae provide strong support to this theory the controversy concerning interpretation of these two theories of alternation of generation attracted more attention when phenomena of apogamy and apospory were discovered apogamy is a direct formation of sporophyte from the gametophyte without intervention of gametic union apospory is a direct formation of gametophyte from the sporophyte without intervention of spore formation in view of these alternate pathways in life cycle apogamy and apospory the area of interpolation is untenable that is unjustifiable thus it is possible to have an alternation of morphologies without an alternation in the levels of polarity in bryophytes the phenomena of apogamy and apospory are of rare occurrence under natural conditions hence their significance is limited in the normal life cycles